What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Vile Files Going Deeper Edition. I'm your host, Nick, joined by the household. It's a full household this episode. We got uh, my lovely fiance, our pop culture correspondent to my right. We have Allie, we have Genevieve, we have Derek. We also have Amanda on this episode. Do you want to address what you just told me? Apparently, this alleged feud between you two. (laughs) Allie and Amanda hate each other. Apparently, not only did something happen between us, but we've... What happened? Who knows? Something happened (laughs) between us to the point where we can't sit at the desk together and eat, we, no, we can't be on episodes together. And even when we are on episodes together, we can't sit next to each other, which I found funny because one- Where are you no- reading this? Is this one comment? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Nothing happened. And two, the fact what that- episode was this on? That something so dramatic would have happened that we would have gone to Nick and been like, like hey, cannot it's me or her. be in the same room. Yeah. Not at the desk. Genevieve's in the middle. But other than that, I will be back in that chair or on that couch. Do not make me sit next to her. The household grows and- um... Oh, well, it really is. I've been here. I've just been back there. Allie does so much that y'all just don't even understand. We have a, a hit show for you today. The one, the only, Izzy Zapata. Well, he has like a nice ring to it that Zapata. I can't quite do. Anyways, we have a lot of questions for Izzy. Most importantly, why was he such a dick to Johnny? The drawer. Lots to talk about with Izzy. He, uh, he definitely is a very, he was a very giving guest. A lovely gentleman. Did your opinions change? Um, yeah. yeah, I would say mine did. He definitely made up for the way he spoke to Johnny. Okay. Yeah. Well, so that well, was my biggest beef with him was how mean he was yeah. to her. And I was curious to know if he felt bad, if he had remorse, if he regretted that. And he seems to do very much. Well, 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 well. well. <laughs> why don't you hey, just wh- keep on listening? Why, why don't you just decide? <laughs> nice try. Decide. You thought you'd yeah. get it out of you us and you got intro, me, decide, but you didn't. Decide no, 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 for no, no, yourselves. No. <laughs> Breaking news. We have some information from inside the suite. You know what suite we're talking about. Yeah, Taylor's. And for those who don't. <laughs> the fantasy <get> suite. <laughs> the fantasy suite, yeah. <laughs> no, oh God. The C-suite. Already. Suite. Yeah. <laughs> Already. Uh, inside the star-studded suite. That uh, was Taylor Swift watching her man, Travis. I've started falling asleep to the New Heights podcast. Wow. To dad's voice. Yeah. Started falling asleep to dad's voice. voice. Yeah. No, no. Just dad. Just dad. Yeah. I had two questions for my friend who was also in the suite. I wanted to know how Brittany Mahomes was. And did you find out? Yeah. And how is she? Lovely, apparently. For any thoughts that somehow... Uh, Brittany has inserted herself into Taylor's group or, you know, kind of bulldozed her way into the suite, so to speak, that would be inaccurate. Um, she was welcomed with open arms and invited and taken out on the town by uh, Taylor and the girls. You know, it's interesting because, like, it seems like Brittany Mahomes has gotten, she's been in the press, she's gotten some bad press in the past. And This is my speculation after talking to my friend, but the read I got was, again, the takeaway is she's very nice, but the read I got was there was a lot of empathy towards, you know, what it might be like for Brittany Mahomes, who is married to Patrick Mahomes, currently the best quarterback in the NFL, the quarterback of the Kansas City Chiefs, who Kansas City is not a huge city. So imagine being Patrick Mahomes. He's a big fish in a small pond. He's a huge fish in a small pond. Patrick Mahomes has a problematic brother. Well, he's got his issues. We don't need to get into that. And it seems like instead of people going after Patrick, it's almost as if Brittany is a convenient scapegoat. Mm -hmm. And my read, again, this is coming from me. I couldn't help but, you know, you look at the Sophie situation. Taylor has gone after a way to look after Sophie after clearly like the Jonas Brothers trying to get ahead of the divorce and the press and things like that. And it seems like Taylor is going out of her way. She seems like she got, you know, there, there was this after party after the Kansas City Chiefs game. There were reports that her and Brittany got to know each other. And I can't help but wonder if Taylor has, you know, grew fond of her. Taylor is using her power, her stardom to, you know, kind of protect women who, you know, through maybe whether it's no fault of their own, like Sophie is on the receiving end of you know, certain type of vitriol from the Jonas Brother fan base. And then Brittany Mahomes is on the receiving end of like vitriol from certain football fans. I think like Taylor having been like kind of the underdog, having been like the the woman who was like 
put in the spotlight and like just got nasty nasty comments for like an entire year that she was forced to go like underground essentially i'm sure she like really feels for those women but i also she strikes me as the type of person where she's gonna do her own research she's gonna talk to them directly and she's just going to pick the side that she thinks is right i don't think she's just willy-nilly gonna say i'm always gonna defend the woman she goes to dinner with sophie turner you know it's like she hears sides and then she very clearly takes but she's not afraid to go out of her way to protect people who might be misunderstood totally or misrepresented in the press and she has no problem using her power and her stardom to protect you know, those people that she wants to help. I'd imagine Taylor has like gotten really good at telling what's smoke and what's fire. Yeah. In the gossip columns. Mm. I'm definitely sure that like, you know, it's like she went into the first game, like being besties with Britney. Like, I mean, I don't even know if they're besties now, but it seems like she's really liked the person that she got to know other people who also got to know Britney and that sweet really think she's wonderful. Um, and really like enjoyed the person they got to know. And I think there's some empathy towards Brittany and how she has been treated in the press. And it seems like a really nice gesture for Taylor to go out of her way. Like, you know, she's in the midst of dating Travis, right? And all this press and in the midst of this new love affair, she's also kind of made a friend and taking that friend under her wing to, you know, help someone out who she may feel like has got a bad rep. While on the other wing has Sophie Turner. Her wings are full. Her wings are so full. Oh, yeah. Stacked. She was there with her backup singer, too. Did you see that? No. That's one of the women that she brought to the suite. Like, I love that. You know, like, I love that Taylor has, like, normal friends. Taylor seems like someone who being a good friend really matters to her. She's also yes. loyal. Like you look yes. at her band that she's on tour with and, and you can singers. point out the people yeah. who have been there since the beginning. For what it's worth, I said, I hope the Travis and Taylor thing is real. To which I got a reply. I don't understand the comments about real or fake. Like they just started dating. There's a genuine interest there. There's no fakeness to it, but I don't know. You know, they just started dating. Yeah, doesn't like she mean, doesn't like, know if they're going to get married. Yeah, it's like, like, like most people who just start dating, it's like, yeah, they they well, seem I, like there's a genuine like interest there. The rumors are that this is PR. It's to help him. It's to help her with her movie sales. Not that she needs help with that. It's to like get over the Maddie Healy controversy, which like that was a while ago and we'd already stopped talking about it. Yeah. I, and I just don't think like Taylor needs to be in a PR relationship anymore. Like I that can say with confidence her. that it is not. Love. Fake. That it is. I didn't think it was anyway, but love. And it's very early stages, but the interest is mutual and genuine. Mm. Like they're probably not boyfriend girlfriend yet, so that's fine. Yeah, I I don't know. I didn't pry, but certainly not, certainly not fake, and certainly not for press. I love them. Yay. I saw the Kansas City Chiefs were playing the Vikings on Sunday, and I debated flying home. Yeah, I wanted to come with you. <sighs> so, anyways, yeah, it, it's it makes me more interested in getting to know who Brittany Mahomes is. Because I, I do think Taylor has impeccable taste. And I think she is very careful about who her circle includes. As nice as she is and outreaching to certain people, I don't think she does that with just anyone. And I think she's incredibly careful and incredibly safe. And I think it says a lot for the people that she is inviting to dinner and who she's inviting into her suite. And I think just people out there should, if you're a Taylor Swift fan, you should trust Taylor's taste. Don't trust Taylor, but then criticize the people she's hanging out with. Uh, what do we have to get into? Well, we had special forces that, you know, that happened. Tom and I raced down a wall. I was really pissed because technically he beat me. I got screwed. Because if you watch it, they didn't air it. At the very end, you see me get jerked. And (gasps) I like stopped. They pulled you back? I was literally going so fast down the wall that the safety team yanked on it. And then Billy said, you got scared and you stopped. And then what they (gasps) didn't show is him winking at me. (laughs) Uh, when he said that. How did you not just like a wink faint? They did just show Nick and Tom both like smiling, like weirdly smiling after it. So it's like, well, something happened. Yeah. I was pissed because it was, I was, Tom and I were both flying. Like we were actually last to go. They didn't mm-hmm. air it that way. And so we had the benefit. If you go last, because you, you, you don't get any fucking training. They're literally like, go figure it out. Go do it. And on the way up, Tom bet me a hundred. He's like, do you want to bet a hundred bucks? They didn't show that. He's like, I side bet hundred bucks. I was like, sure. Uh, so we had a we had a hundred bucks riding on it. Did, Did you, you ever, pay him? I yeah. paid him. Yep. As soon as I got off, as soon as I got my phone back. You like, Venmoed Tom your... Sandoval a hundred dollars. Yeah, I'm a man of my word. Did you go through his Venmo history? It's like the greatest way to stalk someone in this day and age. I think. 
Can you pull up Tom Sandoval's Venmo? <laughs> no, I'm not going to go through his Venmo history on the it's show. It's like Raquel Levis. Raquel we'll do it Levis. after. Raquel Levis. Ariana. Ariana. Rent. Half of rent. rent. Yeah. <laughs> half of mortgage. I'm assuming his would be on private. Anyways, we were flying down the thing and other people, you know, there was, when you got to the bottom of the wall, there was a cliff, you had to jump down. And when Jojo raced Brian, there was a, a bit of a dispute between who won because Brian made it to the edge of the wall first, but Jojo made it down to the, the safety people first. So then it was decided you had to make it not only at the edge of the wall, but you had to get down onto the steps. So I'm flying. Tom got a bit of a head start. I really got momentum. I'm flying. I'm a good t- 10 feet ahead of Tom. And that towards the end, I was like, you got to just keep fucking going. And I went to like jump off and in, in the air, I just felt a pull. And if you watch it back, you see me get fucking yanked. And I was like, what the fuck? That's and Tom's just like dangerous laugh- too. I, didn't, uh, I was trying to win. And <laughs> Tom was just kind of laughing and I was just, you know, laughing back. And then, yeah, Billy said I chickened out and I got real pissed and I just decided to, you know, take it and smirk and whatever. I really feel bad for Des, though, because Des really, when he kept saying, I got to go, staff, I got to go, like, he had to go. Number two. It, he really got screwed, because when you were in that equipment, when you were down facing the wall, with it was just pulling on your guts. It was mm. just all the, it oh. was, I don't know how much pounds of pressure was pulling. When, when Angela, a.k.a. Black China, was deciding whether she wanted to go or not and in the middle of quitting, that took several minutes. So he's just literally hanging there ah. for probably a good two or three minutes, maybe even longer. And he really like had to. And then we were in a place where they were like, well, go use the bushes if you want, but we don't give a shit. You know, that was literally the attitude, you know. And so he really got screwed. Pooping your pants is never a pleasant feeling. Did you get the... Uh, <laughs> Obviously not. I pooped you... my pants when I was wearing skinny jeans once. Figure that out. <laughs> How old were you? Figure 18, 19. Out. It's too old. <laughs> too, too old to be doing too that. Old. Too old. to be wearing skinny jeans. They were out of style and I would agree. at that point. And I would agree. <laughs> They're death out of style then. Well, skinny... University of Minnesota frat house. <laughs> I, I have definitely out of my skinny jean era, of which I was... I really was a big part of for a long time. Men really held on to that. They still are. Oh my God. I hate it. The, the like grip it. they have on skinny jeans, it must be released. <laughs> really? I mean, I have Natalie to thank for, for saving me from the skinny jeans era. That's like 90% it's so much of more. It, like a girl's job in a relationship. You know, not to love and care, no, to make the style it. better. And the house. But, well, it, it, it's, yes. it's not only better, but just Decor. to keep it, keep it progressive, <laughs> keep it uh. changing. Men yeah. will like to lock in to a certain era of fashion. Like we're yeah. currently Early trying aughts. to get Nick out of the cherry t-shirts. Um, that was your I'm fault. Sure. I thought you put him in them. Yes, and now he only. But when wears I them. when I grab a hold of something, I really grab a hold of it. Yeah, you're a loyal man. Yeah, that's one. Thing. I challenged him um, the other day to put together an outfit that did not involve a cherry t-shirt. <laughs> How do you and do? I don't think it happened. To hmm. be honest, mm, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do we have to get into before? Uh, we get to uh, Izzy. Why are people being mean to Kendall for her walk at the Shiprielli Sh- show? I don't know. Because she has a good walk. I think it's like also with some of these things, isn't it more of a stylistic thing? I would assume they give you some sort of note. Yeah, some like creative directors want you to. They specifically said it's how a door would walk if it had legs. Oh, a door. People are so fucking mean. I She's know. just I walking slow. She's modeling. She's a little stiff. I'll say it. Well, yeah, she's but it looks like a very stylized. The dress. She has her hands on her hips. She has this huge hair. I don't. I think it was a style cho- stylistic choice. Listen, people are always going to hate on them, no matter what they do. Travis Kelsey's ex girlfriend Kayla Nicole unfollow former close friend Brittany Mahomes. How close were they? And mm. we're basing this off of what that they follow each other on Instagram. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I only just learned about this man. I mean, I certainly just heard about Kayla Nicole. So true. Well, and true. the fact that every article she pops up on starts with Travis Kelsey's ex. She's really milking this. Yep. So apparently Sophie Turner and Joe Jonas were planning their forever home in England. So apparently Joe penned the heartfelt note on June 16th, which was just three months before he filed for divorce in an effort to persuade a homeowner to sell their property in Wallingford, Wallingford, Oxford. When my wife and I decided we were going to spend more time in the UK and search for a permanent home, our daughter expressed three unwavering requirements. 
uh, and obsessed with these. Having chickens, a pony, and a Wendy horse. House. House. Doesn't that kind of just prove how quickly he either changed his mind and also she was trying to take her kids back to England and he's holding their passports, but three months before he's trying to buy a house in England. That's us. And he's penning a letter himself trying to convince these people to sell them their home. Yeah, which is pretty typical in the buying a home process, you know, especially if it's competitive. You're like, hey, this is why I want this home. And I, you know, these are the memories I have because people sometimes who sell their home are attached to it and they want to, they want to know that they're selling their home to someone who's truly going to love it as much as they do. So that's pretty common. But the fact that he did that, yeah, it you know, shows that he must have truly wanted to move there. and was very serious about it. While many of the ho- houses we viewed met this criteria, the moment we turned the corner and caught sight of the charming blue shutters, we experienced a sense of magic unlike anything we had felt before. This is Joe's words. Mm-hmm. The requirements okay, of their daughter? Yes. How old is she? Sounds like Sophie has a case. So it is a 7.5 million pound estate with a beautiful walled garden. I think it's about nine mil dollars ish. My father-in-law is an incredibly keen gardener and he was suitably impressed by your vegetable garden too. A very important sign off. He's really including a lot of detail in this letter. Hmm. Wait, so wait, our fr- friend of show, Cammy Crawford, she thinks that uh, the Taylor and Ke- Travis are is, is all for PR, huh? Yes. Again, I just don't like we stopped talking about Matt Healy as soon as Taylor stopped hanging out with him. I, I don't think Taylor needs to do any type of rebrand or PR saving. Because... Yeah, like this would be pretty de- a delayed response if this was like in response to that. And I don't think she'd be so delayed. I think it's more likely that that one theory we talked about was true of Taylor using this as a distraction from the Sophie and Joe divorce, because that's at least more current. If this is being used for PR or she's doing things at least a bit more publicly to create headlines, I could see it. But then she obviously released like someone from her camp released the fact that Sophie's staying in her New York place. Yeah. You know, and then she was at the game. Yeah. Mm. But that's not that hard. I mean, they all have friends. People talk. And like all it was confirmed is that she let her stay there. I mean, I mean, literally, that's what's happening with you and your friends. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and it's just like I literally call her up. I caught up with her. I asked her some basic questions. It was very vague. You know what I'm saying? And it was just like, you know, again, when I was like, hey, is it real? The response was that's a, from the POV. It's such a silly question. I get like, we all think everything with Taylor has got to be like all produced and yada yada. Or at least some people, we don't think that. But she's a real human being who has a genuine interest in meeting people and making connections just like anyone else would. And I don't think Taylor Swift's at the point of her life, to your point, is that, that she needs to, she's so successful right now. They are literally moving movies. The new Exorcist movie yeah. literally moved. They were like, we bow to Taylor, you know? Like, and he didn't need to date Travis Kelsey for Taylor Swift's movie about her tour, like making the whole movie industry re like do their schedule. What's more believable that or that Taylor Swift actually like has a genuine interest in a successful, good looking, charming guy who's got a good family close with his brother. There's a lot to like about Travis Kelsey. So no. Did y'all um, hear about the Lady Gaga? What's going on with Lady Gaga right no. now? Remember when her dogs got kidnapped? Mm -hmm. So she basically was like, there's a reward for $500,000. No questions asked if like my dogs get returned. Then the woman who returned them was the kidnapper herself. (gasps) And Lady Gaga was like, I'm literally not paying you. Like, (sighs) go fuck yourself. And a judge just ruled that she does not have to pay. Good. Nor any money for alleged damages and emotional distress. So the dog napper is saying she has emotional distress? I mean, the sad reality is, is anyone can sue anyone for anything. That is a flaw in our court system. And uh, you can claim anything if you want to. And so, yeah, this lady could easily claim I got emotional distress after I came forward and her fans harassed me. I don't know. People can make whatever shit up. Crazy. Uh, unfortunately. But could you imagine if Lady Gaga had to pay the kidnapper? You know how many kidnappers would then be like, Okay, I'll go kidnap yeah. and then return it. Mm-hmm. Thank, thank you for to this judge who really had the wisdom to do the right thing. Uh, well, maybe before we get to Izzy, the Love Is Blind creator commented on what the reveal that they knew each other prior to going in the pods. What does he said? Uche and Le- and Lydia. 
Um, we had absolutely no idea. The intention is that we have a pool of people that don't know each other. We have had a few instances in the past with people on the same side, like two women who know each other a little bit. But we haven't had people, to my knowledge, on the other side of the pod that knew each other. And we've never had, to my knowledge, people who have had a relationship in the past. It's just mind blowing that that was the case and truly shocking on day one that that information was delivered to me. It's time to get to Izzy. Uh, also, don't forget to send in those questions at asknick at thevilefiles.com for all things Ask Nick, texting office hours. We have an amazing be- episode of Better Day to Never live tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern. So be sure to check that out as well. What? Can we talk BDSM? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's Genevieve and my idea. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, next week, we have the one and only Gabby Wendy on Reality Recap to break down The Golden Bachelor, Love is Blind, and Bachelor in Paradise. And then we have Heather DeBro from Real Housewives to talk all about Housewives of Orange County, the reunion that uh, will just have wrapped. So lots to get into with Heather. Excited to have her. Also, don't forget we had an Update Classic drop last Friday uh, that is available to all. We have our Ask Nick episodes every Monday. And if you love those updates, don't forget we have a new update dropping behind Vile Files Plus this week, Friday. That's tomorrow. So if you're dying for more updates from some of your favorite stories from Ask Nick, Texting Office Hours, and Sweat in the Wedding, be sure to check them out behind Vile Files Plus. Let's go to vilefiles.com. It's free to sign up. Do not miss out. It's a stacked month. It's a stacked month. Yeah, we have a lot for you. We're excited to share with you. All right, it's time for Izzy. I struggle sleeping. It is the type of thing where I want to make sure I have the best bedding, sheets, pillows, all that good stuff. And I've always struggled with pillows for some reason. I don't know if I just have a very heavy head, um, but I usually end up using two pillows. I need support. And half the time, I feel like my pillows just go flat within days or weeks of me buying them until I discovered Hello Pillows because they're made out of buckwheat. So unlike a traditional pillow that's really squishy and might go flat, it is filled with support and it's going to last in the exact same condition that you get it. And honestly, I've never slept better. It stays cool and dry. I tend to be a night sweater and I have not sweat since (laughs) starting my Hello Pillow. Hello is made in the U.S. with quality construction and materials. Their certified organic cotton case is cut and sewn for durability, and the buckwheat is grown and milled in the United States. Here's the deal. Sleep on it for 60 nights. If Hello isn't for you, just ship it back, and they'll give you a refund. So to get your Hello pillow, go to hellopillow.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That's H-U-L-L-O-P-I-L-L-O-W.com slash V-I-A-L-L. If you try more than one pillow, you get a discount of up to $20 per pillow, depending on the size. Get fast, free shipping on every order. 1% of all profits are donated to the Nature Conservancy. Give the gift of better sleep. Hello is a unique gift your family and friends will appreciate every night. Peloton, all you workout warriors out there, if you are looking for a fast and convenient way to meet your wellness goals, you got to check out the Peloton app today. I know you've heard of Peloton probably because of their amazing bikes and treadmills and things like that, but they have an array of different cool workouts that require no equipment, no weights. You can do it from the comfort of your home, your hotel. If you are uh, constantly on the go, imagine how much time you can save by just getting your workout done from the comfort of your living room. And what's great about Peloton is they have such, again, a variety of classes from yoga to meditation to bar to boxing. You can do classes with your friends virtually, right? So you can compete with people that you know. Uh, it doesn't, you don't have to live in the same neighborhood. They can live across the country. It's, it's a great way to stay in touch. They also have great playlists, great trainers, such a variety of ways to stay in shape. And so much about like, you know, working out can be mundane and boring and, you know, such a grind. Mix it up with Peloton with all different types of amazing classes they have available to you. Try the Peloton app today for free for 30 days. Just try it for free. You have nothing to lose. New paid memberships only start starting at $12.99 a month after trial unless canceled terms apply again try the peloton app today for free for 30 days you won't regret it izzy welcome thanks for having me i need you to, i need you to get close up in there we're really we want to hear that beautiful voice in there. <laughs> sit back relax get up there here we All go right, there good. we go now how you doing izzy i'm great you're doing great great okay. we're excited to have you we really are. We are enjoying this season so far. It's been <laughs> it's a juicy uh, one for it's sure. It's been wonderfully messy. Mm-hmm. How, how do I want to do this? Because we have to make sure we go in sequential order with you. So I want to ask him how his heart is, but then I don't want to give too much away, you know, because we don't know how your heart is. Are you <laughs> married? Are you in love? That's we, true. We don't know. Honestly, right now, I'm like, 
I'm very locked in. Okay. With Stacy, you know, like my fiance, obviously madly in love. It's growing more every day. But, you know, kind of hitting the hiccups, like noticing, mm, I guess my efforts sometimes aren't satisfying. Yeah. Or, uh, Let's actually go back to the beginning. Let's yeah. go back to the beginning. How did you end up on the show? I didn't even apply. Like, I don't know how I ended up. I just... Well, I mean, you ended up somehow. Yeah. And do people apply? I'm not really sure. I don't um, even really know how the, the casting Love is process. Blind casting process works. I was works. Uh, working out one day on my lunch break, and mm -hmm. I just got this phone call from, like, an L.A. number. I thought it was a telemarketer. Okay. So I ignored it twice, and then I got, like, a long text saying, hey, this is so-and-so. I'm casting for Love is Blind. You've ever seen it? We'd love to talk to you. And I was like, there's no way this is real. And so... Uh, I called her and she's like, add me on IG right now. So, you know, I'm real. And so I added her and I was like, holy shit. Yeah, you, you are real. So she's like, I love your profile. I would love to get like a Zoom interview with you. And it's kind of Instagram stalked you. How did they find so your number? I'm thinking, I think what I saw, uh, I don't really know, but I think from, cause I like YouTube and like was researching. Someone said from like previous show that sometimes they'll make fake, uh, like bumbles or hinges or something and go and kind of like scout you out that way, which is actually pretty smart. In Interesting. My opinion. Yeah. Whoa. I'm not sure if that's how they did it with me. You heard a rumor. I heard a rumor. It was like someone I saw from something online. Okay, we have we've we've received confirmation in the room <laughs> that that, that might true. be that might be true. All right, yeah, yeah it seems so, to be a tactic. Smart, yeah. it is smart because we're I all like single, that. looking yeah. for love, right? And so, and uh, you live in Houston, Houston, yeah, and that's where this season takes place because mm -hmm. it doesn't really seem like previous years they don't seem a, to make a big deal about that as much as other seasons. Like other seasons, I like I really knew it was Chicago. Oh or, yeah, I keep asking myself while I'm watching, I'm like, where the fuck are these people? Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> so are you from Houston? I've been there about six years now. I'm from uh, Corpus Christi, so it's like four hours south of Houston. Okay. Um, but I've been in Houston about six years now, so I feel like I'm a Houstonian. At the okay, so Bumble Profile. Which which app do you... Uh, Hinge, which app do you Hinge has better quality, okay. in my opinion. <laughs> what are your prompt answers? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Like, which ones did you pick? And how uh, did you well, what, were, what were your prompt answers? Yeah. Before um, you go to the show. So I think it was like, this yeah. year I really want to. I love country music. So I did um, skydiving, Rocky Mountain climbing, and... Oh, well, it was a it was a Tim McGraw lyrics, and if you actually caught on, if you knew the lyrics, and then it's like a green flag. A lot of people actually took it literally serious and were like, "I want to go skydiving," or "Why would you want to ride a bull?" <laughs> I mean, I would do all of them, but uh, but yeah, that um, green flags that you're looking for. That one I tried to be like sincere about, so like you know, good communicator, emotional, you know, intelligence, kind of like all those things. And then I think it was like what uh, I'm weirdly attracted to, like goofy laughs and like pretty smiles. Like. I love a dorky girl sometimes. It's okay. cute. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. And I guess, why did you go on the show? I mean, obviously you got asked, but what was Izzy's love life prior to... Too, Honestly, uh, man, I was blind. dating a lot. Like in Houston, I was having you a good time. You saw the drawer, yeah. Yeah, you saw the drawer. <laughs> yeah. like, I was enjoying myself, <laughs> um, but I was engaged once. Um, you were? Before then, yeah. Okay, I was how, engaged, long, how long ago was that? Uh, oh, man. Uh, I think that ended in only 2019. So hopeless, romantic, looking for love. Like, I want to get married. It's a dream of mine. How long were you engaged for? What uh, happened there? About six months. Six months? Yeah. How long were you dating prior to that? About like two, a little over two years. Okay. Yeah. And what happened? I uh, caught her doing some sketchy stuff. And so... Like what? Uh, you know, just... You were cheated on? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. So... Did you catch her like mid-act or... No, I... One of those uh, iPhone situations. on her phone. Like, I super respectful i never go through any of my girlfriend's phones and it was just a gut feeling i noticed things like passcode was changing i looked over to the side but i was just like huh and i just had this gut feeling she became cold distant you know all the signs it's obvious and one day we we're on a cruise and she was passed out drunk on tequila and i opened it up and there it was on the pick. cruise uh, <laughs> was it, it was, was a seven-day like, cruise. We're on day five. No, two <laughs> like, more <fuck>. days. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, what? So, I mean, on the cruise, you're in the middle of the ocean. You find out your fiance is partaking in extracurricular activities. What was that like? I mean, devastating, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I ended up getting like we. I got another room just on my own, and we got home, moved stuff out, called it a day, and see you later. Damn. Yeah. It must have been chat. hard. Oh, dude, that messed me up for about a year for yeah, sure i can imagine like, yeah. i felt like i was never going to be able to fall in love again i was just like super jaded dating around trying to like fill a void and i just hit a point where i just like stopped and yeah because it wasn't be fair to other you know somebody else did you feel like you developed some unhealthy habits in your in your healing process actually i felt like i 
I, I did a lot of self work. Like I oh, you put myself, I still tried to save that even after, um, I put us in premarital counseling. She didn't want to do it. And so I just kind of stuck with it myself. So after you, you found out separate rooms, you get back, you were willing to mm -hmm. explore, try to fix it. See if, yeah. you, see if you guys could heal. Yeah. And, uh, so I put us in premarital counseling. Um, I didn't have the best example growing up as far as like, you know, my father with my mom. So I was like, you know what? I'm breaking the chain. I want to learn like what it is to be in a healthy relationship. So I did that while doing like therapy on myself as well. Okay. So I would say to that time, it was like a lot of self-love and like self-development. Good for you. And so even though after she opted out you you stuck with it mm -hmm. oh, wow good yeah. for you yeah, yeah. so what now you i'm a yourself? great husband i got it all down <laughs> well, what, what did you learn about yourself in that in that period um establish boundaries and stick to them i think that's something that i'm working on being more present sticking to my boundaries i'm a very big giver um i forgive a lot and i'm learning to just like put my foot down keep my foot down and have someone respect me okay yeah. that makes sense and i'm assuming that was something that you were mindful of going into this process oh yeah i felt like i was perfect to go into this process. I knew what I wanted, um, well seasoned for it. Um, I knew, you know, the qualities to be a good fiance and husband. So, so, um, when you went on the show, I'm curious, I've never really had a chance to interview, I, I mean, someone from love is blind at this juncture. Mm -hmm. And so I never really asked in terms of like, it's a crazy show, dude. It's insane. I was <laughs> on the bachelor. The They're like, Hey, you know, if you make it to the end, like, you know, which is almost unlikely, like mm -hmm. you might get engaged, but like, whatever, you know, yeah. you can get out of that. That's kind of like, a conversation that's happening uh, on the show you mm -hmm. know they downplay it but love is blind it's like hey if you do this we're doing it two weeks in we're gonna ask you if you want to get engaged with someone and then four weeks later we're gonna ask if you want to get fucking married so yeah, what was your mindset like going um, into this because, so realistically going yeah. in i was like there's no fucking way this is gonna work okay like there's no way and i'm glad know, to hear that there's some yeah, because like, it's, it's a TV yeah. show, you know, it's like you don't know that mindset. But then I got there and then Chris um, talks to us every morning and kind of gives us like a pep talk as we go through the day. And I was like, you know what? I'm here. Um, no distractions. I just fully submitted myself to the experiment. And I was like, you know what? If I'm here, I'm going to do it. Let's just give it a shot. And I did, dude. And it was honestly the best way to date, in my opinion. And Chris, Chris being the, the creator uh, of the show. Yeah. 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 Wow. He's, so he's hands on. Oh yeah, dude. He's, he interacts with us. Like he gives his guidance through the way, which I've appreciated because I followed his advice the whole way. And I felt like I did the experiment perfectly. What was the best advice he gave you? The minute you feel an instant connection with somebody, don't just latch on, like explore everyone till the end. Because a lot of people on that show did do that. Like I would go into some dates and some girls would just be like, well, I already found my person. It's like day two or three. They're like, you can either stay in here if you want or like leave, but I'm pretty much set on this guy. I was like, if you're thinking of marriage, you should explore every option, every person all the way, you know, through. That was oh. kind of Lydia with you. She was exactly. like, you're my, like very, very soon in, you're my person. Yeah. And it was the very <laughs> she's, beginning. She's kind of a, like put your claws in. She loves hard. Yeah, right? she loves she's very passionate. Yeah. What was it like for you when she was kind of expressing that you were her number one and it was clear she kind of wanted to escalate things and then you were in a position where you weren't there and you were made to kind of explain why? Like yeah. how did you approach uh, that situation? Going into the show, you're just excited to find love, right? And so it's super exciting to have people want you, you know what I mean? And they're interested, but you never go in thinking that you're going to hurt somebody. And that was the hardest part, honestly. I kept my options open. Like she was a, she's a great girl. Um, I love that she loves hard because that's the way I am. Um, but I still kept exploring my, you know, my options and uh, I had stronger connections, you know, connections were developing later on down the road that I didn't expect. And yeah, I felt horrible to have to, you know, let her go. Um, but I didn't want to lead her on, you know what I mean? Um, so in that situation, yeah, it's very uncomfortable. I think anyone would be in a weird spot. Uh, I want to rewind a little bit to the beginning of the pause, but before I, were you well fed? And hydrated. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> oh, dude, I ate so much in there. <laughs> it was great. And you have food all the time. Like, there's food all the time. So okay. it was good. Yeah, it was. Yeah. That's what I, you know, I actually uh, felt like I gained some weight when I was okay. there. Okay. Actually, right. so. yeah. <laughs> there we go. Um, what was it like going into the pods? You know, uh, that just going in there. Who was the first person you spoke with? Um, man, I can't remember the first person. 
I remember Johnny was number my third person. Johnny was your third. Okay, uh, I remember and, that because she was like the first standout. How long are like the sessions? So first day, it's fifteen minutes. You see all fifteen girls. Oh, okay. And so it's quick. So like, quick. It's speed dating. Uh-huh. Okay, so you got you got fifteen minutes I never knew to that. like really make an impression. So you have to like be very strategic. How are you going to go into this? You know, so you're going to go shoot the shit and just be like, eh, or. Or did you have like a talk track? Like a, hi, I'm Izzy. Oh, dude, I just went in like, (laughs) obviously, you know, what's your name? Where are you from? You kind of get the vibe off the voice and like how their personality is. I wasn't fucking around. I went in deep. I'm like, all right, where are you here? What are you looking for? Like, let's get to it. I got 15 minutes with you. Like, I'm not going to go in there and like shoot the shit and, you know, just act. So So you were pretty earnest about the process. I'm assuming you you didn't get the same vibe from everyone you met. Oh yeah. I, uh, there's one, uh, scene in there that it's actually not shown, but it was my very last date of the day. Of Uh, the first day? That was the first day. And I, uh, walked in and the girl's like, you're asking too many deep questions right now. And I'm like, well, what the fuck? That's what we're here for. So I was like, see you later. I ended up getting out and just walking out mid date. So you should like, have been like, well, let's just stare at each other and hold. Yeah. Oh, wait, we can't, we can't do even that. see each other. Yeah. It's like sit here in silence. Yeah. Like, what do you want to do? But, were there uh, uh, any out there questions that you were asked earlier on, whether it was day one or day two? I don't even think there would be an out there question because I'm just like an open book. I don't care. But there, like, after a couple of days, like we do get, um, I would say the fun, the fun day was like the sex day. So we, you know, sex day. Well, like you just like, uh, <laughs> do tell. like how do you, <laughs> yeah, what do you mean? Like, <laughs> like dancing with the stars has like Disney day, you know, like, <laughs> well, so the, through the process, like they kind of give us guidance on what to talk about. Like one day will be finances. One day will be okay. like values and family. That so makes sense. One day there's sex and so there's, they cut of... little holes in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do they call right, those? Uh, <laughs> glory <laughs> holes. Glory, glory, glory holes. holes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they have like a day like that. So we get to explore and like get to know each other as far as like kinks and you know, lights on lights off and kind of stuff yeah so that's where those questions from they don't just come out of like nowhere of uh-huh. someone just being well freaky. they do like some of the girls are curious um <laughs> oh. <I> will say <laughs> but uh but yeah so we do have a little bit of help along the way that's cool what was the most curious question you got what was my kink what was a kink of mine did you answer absolutely what'd you say i see a spit in my mouth oh <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> The first time I ever heard of, of the spitting in the mouth was from a friend on, friend on Paradise. <laughs> and it was from someone I did not expect it from. Dude, it's, it's honestly kind of I was hot. like, whoa. <laughs> There's a time and a place and a way to do it. A lot of people think it's like hockey and a loogie. It's like, it's got to be in the moment, nice yeah. and slow. Yeah. If it's a cup of tea. Uh, <laughs> uh, you're a... Uh, yeah, you have you have some friends. I'm I'm uh, introduce you to some <laughs> people. There's, There's a community. There's yeah. a community. Yeah. Yeah. community. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Izzy, did you have any conversations with Miriam? Because we are so goddamn curious what her job is. Did you get to the bottom of that? Yeah. Does she live in Saudi yeah. Arabia or I honestly don't know. Um, wow. I think she, I know she told some of the other cast. I think she's like a chemist. Hmm. And she does like I we all she's a, think she's a chemist, and she does skincare she on the side. So confusing skincare about it. on the side. Yeah, I think. But she's an amazing girl. Like awesome, awesome girl. Yeah. Okay. Johnny was the first lady you met that you connected with. Mm-hmm. You had basically three connections: mm-hmm. uh, Lydia, Johnny, and Stacy. Mm-hmm. And like the timeline of when you connected with them was it all kind of sequential on the same day? Like uh, timeline wise, like how did it all start? Day one. Johnny was it was like oh you're my number one okay. like it, it was an instant you know connection with her what was uh, it about Johnny we bonded over the fact like she was married I was engaged so we had like understanding as far as like that and it was just more of like an, an emotional trauma bond is what it was like so I was like yeah well, definitely for this girl and then Lydia down the way like even, I would say even with Stacy Stacy was like number eight on the list day one I was like cool girl she seems fun but like I'd be all right if I didn't talk to her, you know? Really? Uh, okay. Then Lydia was up there. What was it about Lydia? Very passionate, very like loving. And she was direct. I like when someone's like direct and straight to the point on what they're looking for. Um, so yeah, that's what I loved about her as well. That makes sense from, you know, from someone who's been through it. You oh know? yeah. Yeah. It's like, I need someone who knows what they want. It's like even if it stings a little bit, you know, they're being honest, Uh huh. you know? Yeah. You know, that kind of feeling of not knowing. Exactly. If you're being told the truth. Mm-hmm. Is a, yeah. It's crappy. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so Lydia's honesty, and then when when did Stacy really shine for you? So Stacy's usually the girl that I go for, like in the real world, as far as like the personality. She's out there because I'm very like out there and fun, but her vulnerable side wasn't coming out yet. So pod dates were 
fucking awesome with her. We were always having a blast, but it's like, all right, I need more of you. Like, it can't just always be fun, like shit's about to get real. So let's see that vulnerable side now. And, you know, she's tough to be vulnerable, but I finally, like, got those walls down. And once that vulnerable side came out, it was just like, fuck yeah, this is, like, it's a well-rounded thing. Like, this is it. Okay. And how how many days did you kind of build your connection with Stacy before you realized I got to let Johnny and Lydia off? So the Lydia, hook? that was I want to say because it it gets exhausting having to like juggle multiple people and memorize a lot about them because you have your you know your pod book where you write your notes, but it's just like okay, I really want to just like focus on the two that I you know one it makes no sense I to lead somebody on that long two. I just want to really narrow it down to the two girls and like weigh it out. Um, so Lydia was pretty, that was pretty, I want to say it was like after day four, um, that was gone. And then Johnny and Stacy, I stayed with them too till the very end. Like last day is when I, um, really? Yeah. The day before a uh, proposal is when I cut it off with Johnny. Wow. Yeah. They, they, it doesn't, it seems like there's more time in between but you mm -hmm. really took it to the end yeah what you what have was, to man it's marriage what you was your I mean? uh, no i hear you what was your deciding factor <laughs> johnny kept telling me she was in love with me um but couldn't tell me why and honestly i was just terrified at the fact that and a lot of people were saying like you ran away when she dumped her trauma about her you know her ex being an addict when you say a lot of people you're talking about the internet or your peers uh the internet okay <laughs> yeah and it's like man i've gone through some shit in my life like if someone comes to me with a sensitive subject like that like i'm not the type to run away it was more so she basically told me that she's never been in love with anyone since that ex who passed and she married somebody as a rebound ended up finding out she wasn't in love with them so she divorced them I, so I asked her, I was like, is anybody ever going to be able to fill that role? She's like, I've always dated guys. I've always been with the nice guys. And she's like, I just can't fall in love. And so I'm like, well, that's a huge red flag for me. I'm not going to risk my heart and marry you just for you to divorce me a couple years down the road because you're not in love with me. So just to, to rewind, and so she had a relationship. That person passed away. Yeah, years ago. Very traumatic for her. Mm-hmm. That affected her. She admitted to you in the pods that as a response to that trauma that she experienced, she rushed into a marriage, mm -hmm. realized that she wasn't in love with that person, got a divorce, and then told you, I don't know if I'll ever be able to love again. Mm -hmm. Also, by the way, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, what? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm curious for you because, you know, and granted, I had so much more of a limited like window into what went on. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of after you broke up with Johnny, watching her kind of go from what she said to you when she was really kind of shooting her shot in a more final way and saying, like, take this leap with me versus what she said to Chris. Like, I saw that as, oh, like sometimes in therapy, I'll have a really strong framing of a story this way. And then I'll talk it through the therapist and I'll be like, oh, no, I was actually repeating a pattern. But granted, that was like with the limited insight. I'm curious when you saw kind of both what she said to you and then what she said to Chris back mm -hmm. to back, like, what did you make of it? Did you still feel like it was pretty contradictory? Yeah. I mean, I feel like she proved her point. It's just like doing the same thing, just going through somebody else as a rebound. You know what I mean? Like, and that's why I told Chris like the truth. I, I didn't, he didn't ask. Um, well, he did ask. And, but I gave him the option. I was like, Hey, and I got to know Chris, like in the, we developed a friendship. That guy's amazing. So genuine and sweet. And he reminded me of myself a lot. So after like seeing that, I'm like, we go back into the pods. I had just cut her, you know, cut that off. And out of nowhere, production's like, Chris, she wants to see you now. So I'm like, you're going to so go. This happened almost simultaneously. Im immediately. Like when I got back into the lounge after that date, she called him in. Well, I guess I guess when I, I want to rewind a little bit. So Johnny told you she loved you multiple times. At mm -hmm. what point did you address that with Johnny? Did you? I mean, I'm curious. What did you say to her when she is saying I, I didn't love tell you. her I loved her yet. Like no, I no, wasn't but, there yet. But she told you, mm -hmm. right? And what you're saying makes perfect sense. You know what I'm saying? I would be concerned. That would be a red flag to me. Mm -hmm. so it's like wait, like thanks for being honest with me about your past and your fear of opening up. And hey, I'm glad you love me, and yeah. that's great to hear. But you know, yeah. I've been doing some work on myself. I don't want to rush into things. Like, exactly. I love that you asked the question, why do you love me? I mean, we give that advice to people all the time because I, I just do is not an acceptable answer. Exactly. You, know, you need to be able to articulate that feeling. I'm assuming you asked her that. Mm -hmm. How, what did she say in response? She just said, I don't know why, but I just know I love you. She And then I, like Stacy, I can ask her and it's like a list. 
Like she sure. can give me a list. She she knew me, like yeah. everything about so me. So she made you feel more seen. Yeah. Okay. Like it was more lo- like at that point it was more logical for me. I was like, this girl actually knows what she wants. She knows why she loved me versus like a girl that's just love bombing me but can't really tell me why. So you tell Johnny she's upset, you go out, and then you are back in like the common room eating all the food. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> and all of a sudden you hear someone call for Chris. Mm-hmm. And we knew he was going back in there with her. So he was like, he's already devastated because she had cut him off. And I never, she took the initiative to do that on her own. Like I went into the date not knowing. Well, I knew because I saw Chris come back like devastated. And he was like, my date just cut me off. And then Johnny, we went into a date and she was just like, I just cut him off. And I was like, oh, well, I didn't, I'm not cutting off my, you know, other match yet. And so it was a sweet gesture, but like, I never asked her to do it. And so yeah, I never asked who to do what Johnny to cut off her other person. And was that the same day or day before that she told you she cut things off with Chris? It was the day before I want to say. Yeah. So she I cut think. things off with Chris. Mm-hmm. You didn't know that or have anything yeah, to do with that. I didn't know that. until I went into the You were date. still talking to Stacy. Mm-hmm. Then you broke up with Johnny. Mm-hmm. She goes back and tries to mend things with Chris. Mm-hmm. Now, when I was watching it back and Natalie, let me know if you agree. We watched it together. I get your point. Like, I understand because it's all, it's a weird thing because you're not only making connections with multiple people, you're also making friends Mm -hmm. with some of these guys. And then you're all kind of sometimes dating the same person. Very messy stuff. Yeah. Uh, So I can understand the complications, but I'm watching it back and I'm thinking like, I I get it. Like, there's a part of me as a viewer that watches it and goes, oh, like he was clearly, he or she was clearly your first choice. Now this is like a second option. It feels kind of yucky. On the flip side, I'm thinking... What a crazy fucking experience. These people are encouraged to make multiple connections. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're told to basically rank these connections in their head. But how do they even know that they're right? So when, you know, someone gets broken up with, Mm -hmm. is it that big of a deal? Is it so wrong for any of those people to sit down and go, I don't know, maybe this is an answer that I didn't think about or even want, but. For all the people who like things happen for a reason or I'm just going to follow the signs. Was it that much of a crime for Johnny to explore the possibility of something with Chris? No, absolutely not. Like I highly encourage it. Like, okay. um, but what, so what rubbed you the wrong way? Because at this point, Chris is my friend. Johnny just told me she can't like fall in love with anybody. And she told me in the pods that, you know, I can see a future with Chris. He's a nice, perfect picture. She's like, but I'm not falling in love with him. So it's like, how are you going to call my boy back when you're not? And you're going to ask, like, try to get him to propose to you when you clearly just told me you're not even falling in love with him. Like, so you yeah. just went into, like, protective friend mode. I was mode. protecting Chris. I, I was not salty. I, I obviously cut her off. And that's what a lot of people were, like, saying. I was like, oh, you're salty. You're trying to, you were jealous. And I'm like, I'm not jealous. Like, the whole point is to date everybody. I just don't want to see my friend get screwed over. Did they air? I don't feel like they aired Johnny telling you that she isn't in love with she did it's she, on it's on they, air they yeah. heard that oh, yeah she's like um she's like she tells me that you know he's the safe route he's the guy that i would go with i remember I that in my life but yeah. i'm not falling in love with him i feel like she said something about a friend like she can see like her and chris could be like best friends it's like a friend relationship or something <sighs> yeah i mean yeah i I don't remember, like, I. it's a lot, but I can vividly remember her saying all the good things about him, but I'm not falling in love with him. Hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's, it's like more of a friendship. Yeah, yeah I think she said that. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Nevertheless, I am curious if you still, I guess, watching it back, stand by how you approached confronting Johnny at the uh, barbecue. Dude, I honestly, that was so out of character of me. How drunk uh, were you? I was you seem <laughs> fucking hammered from our perspective. <laughs> you just nodded at him. <laughs> I, mean, I, you know, I don't want to, it's not an excuse, but no, no, I, no, I am curious I mean, as to. Um, I was, you know, pretty intoxicated, but um, yeah, my delivery was poor. Like I, looking back at that, it's so cringe. That's not how I am. And I've apologized. I apologized to her for that. Like, you did? Yeah. Okay. Um, after the show, um, I saw her in person and then, um, so yeah, I definitely apologized to her, but yeah, I regret my delivery. But I don't regret the message. So how would you have handled it differently? I think one of the meanest things someone can say to someone, and it's a bit, I guess, in the category of bullying, is when someone says some sort of accusation, Mm -hmm. you're shady. And then they follow it up with, everyone else thinks that about you. 
that everything everyone else thinks that about you, I think is one of the meanest things someone can say to someone because like everyone, you know, <laughs> like I'm sure you've had someone say that to you about something. It's yeah. just such a panic attack. It's a panic attack. It's yeah. just like, oh my God, I'm trying to deal with the fact that you fucking hate me. And now I have to like <laughs> get this knowledge that everyone feels this about me. And it, yeah. it's just, it's such a vicious manipulative thing that someone does. Yeah. Would you agree in hindsight? Oh yeah. I mean, I definitely take, you know, responsibility for that. That was harsh um, to her. And yeah, like watching back, I felt, uh, you know, I felt disgusted with myself. But where that came from with the everyone is that, so obviously like we're engaged, we go to Mexico. Um, so me and Stacey are just like gone. And so the c cast comes back home and mm -hmm. they're all like hanging out. So when we get back, I hear the stuff that like she was saying about me after like, you know, I was breaking up how she was like. Who did you hear it from? Multiple of the girls from the cast. Okay. Yeah. Not just Stacy. No, not just Stacy. Because it comes across yeah. that Stacy fucking hates Johnny. Yeah. And I'm curious as no, to yeah. why so, that might be. I mean, but like, true. I mean, I get, you know, they don't get along. There's yeah. not getting along. And there's what it seems like how Stacy feels about Johnny, which is like she just can't let it go. And yeah. then it comes across watching it back that Stacy is planning all this information in your head. Mm -hmm. No. And then like kind of taking advantage of your interactions with Johnny and your feelings towards Johnny. And yeah. like, it's, it comes across that Stacy is multiplying your hatred and anger towards Johnny. And mm -hmm. she almost like unleashed you yeah. on. No. Yeah. To Johnny. So, so what happened there was when we get back home from Mexico, like they all hang out. So there's multiple castmates that we had that are like telling Stacy and I like all this info of like stuff that she was saying about us um, that we didn't know. And it was crazy because it was like a couple of days before that barbecue. So I was just like, I was upset. One, you know, how you were talking about me and the things you were saying about me. And then, you know, that Chris scenario, like you basically kind of like lied or tried to play us. I wouldn't say play us, but like you tell him one thing and tell me another. And then you're talking bad about my fiance when Stacy did nothing to her. Like Stacy played it so well in the pods. And that's one thing I appreciated with the guys. We never, we made it a thing to like never talk about who we're dating because that's where it gets sticky or your friendships get in the way. And it's like, no, we all need to play it fair. Keep that to yourself. And that's what Stacy did. And Johnny was getting upset at her because she didn't tell her who, who she was with. And so, yeah, like, so that's why Johnny felt like Stacy was sketchy too, because Stacy didn't want to reveal who her matches were and there's nothing wrong with that but johnny almost took that as her being sneaky or something yeah that's mm -hmm. exactly how she took it and she's like you knew everyone knew that izzy was like my number one and i felt like you were sketchy because you didn't tell me that you were also like into him too hmm. which i didn't agree with like i think it's very wise to keep keep it to yourself yeah. yeah i guess it's just a creative but it seems like yeah us. like johnny like thought because she was talking about you so much the fact that stacy at no point like interjected like she kind of took that as mm -hmm. like the shady side do yeah. you think because naturally i think when you're forming with multiple connections with multiple people even though you were very clear of like kind of johnny saying i love you and you not saying it back and then cutting things off with her to what extent do you think with stacy like there is a level of needing to repair the fact that your relationship started when you were seeing multiple different people or kind of needing to reassure her that johnny was not you know on your mind or a relevant um, factor i was honestly so honest with stacy the entire way so she knew my connection with johnny every pod date i would go in with her like she knew everything um and i did the same with johnny like i was honest to the both of them I'm like hey these are both of you guys like and I'm just exploring it, you know, that was, I'm very transparent with them. So they weren't like, well, how do you, how do you, how did the guys at least, cause the guys agreed that you guys mm -hmm. wouldn't talk, but if the daters are being transparent about it, then mm -hmm. it's like, you guys aren't sharing, but your dater, the daters are, you, am I making sense? Because you're telling Johnny and Stacy that you're mm -hmm. dating them both. Uh -huh. Stacy and Johnny aren't communicating with. In, in, in theory, mm -hmm. each other about the fact of about who they're dating, but like because you're feeding that information, they kind of it's like this unspoken truth, and that can create drama. And it's not like it's your fault, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they're like were you using names kind of like when you were like say for example updating Johnny, just being like, hey, I want to be fully transparent. I have another connection. Were you saying it's with Stacy? No, for a while I was just like I'm having other connections. Oh, okay. Um, okay. It wasn't until I want to say. 
day seven or eight, that's when I'm like, all right, this is it. And I said, and I tell that to Johnny, I'm like, look, this is the other person. This is how it's happened. She came out of nowhere. And this is where it stands between, you know, with me and you and vice versa. So, um, but yes, I did keep it like quiet for a while. Obviously don't want to tell them. But then the girls, like the girls would share everything. Like the girls would talk about who they were dating. So there would be like instances like, oh yeah, like, you know, my friend likes you, so I don't want to pursue you kind of thing. I feel bad. At the end of the day, yes, do you want to have your friendships? We're not there to make friends. We're there to find love. Yeah. It's about yourself at the end of the day. Going back, do you would you still, I mean, obviously you, you've expressed your regrets, but specifically, if I, just as a friend, I would be like, hey, is he like, oh, the Johnny situation got messy. But like next time that happens, as much as you want to protect your friend, mm -hmm. why don't you just have a conversation with your friend? a la Chris mm -hmm. and to say, Hey man, like friend to friend, here are my concerns, take it or leave it, decide mm -hmm. for yourself. You're an adult, yeah. but I just want to be transparent with you. Why not just do that rather than. So, cause I, in that scenario, I happened to just like talk to Johnny first. Like I had to have that conversation first on how it went. I don't no, feel like I you can't say that, but I feel like that was just like a TV moment maybe. So I wanted to talk to Chris and I did have that conversation with him. I mean, it was just unfortunate. I had to talk to Johnny first. Well, we, I feel like maybe in talking about Mexico and like what it was like arriving there and oh, yeah. kind of like, yeah, like tell me about what it was like to see Stacy, to like grow a physical connection, to just get to know each other more from spending <laughs> time in the same room. Honestly, it was amazing. Reveal day. I was definitely very awkward. Uh, I was in shock. Like I was shaking. What did you think she would look like? Man, I don't know. Like, I mean... Yeah. That's got to be hard not to like imagine yeah, yeah, yeah. brunette yeah. or their you know, voice, like, you know, yeah. like yeah. cut the together some picture. Yeah. You, you didn't like hair color. And also, that's another thing I'm curious about in the pods. Are there rules with certain questions? Mm -mm. You could tell a story that, you know, you're able to articulate that maybe you're of a certain height or weight <laughs> or. Your, your hair is a certain color. So it's like this one time I was reaching for a bookshelf and thank God I was able to reach it. Cause I'm, you know, like, I don't know. Do people uh, try to uh, kind of like, you know, drip that information? In. I mean, I, I would say some other people, I can't speak for others. I don't know yeah. what they asked. I mean, I'm sure maybe people did as far as for me. Um, I did my best to avoid all that. Okay. Like I wanted to do this right. Um, I didn't care about any of that stuff. So I purposely uh, avoided those questions. Okay. I wanted to do it like right. Um, but like seeing her, obviously gorgeous girl, I was blown away. Um, very happy with the outcome. And so like I saw her and like I was just nervous. You know what I mean? Like it's a big deal. This is my fiance, gorgeous girl. It's like seeing the hot girl in school. I'm like, you know. And so when we got to Mexico, actually we had a couple of days before we flew out. And so to reassure her, I journaled her every single day until we got there of like how it was feeling. Um, so when we got to Mexico, I read her, we got like sat in a jacuzzi and I read her everything that I wrote her to give her reassurance because she was like, man, I don't know if this guy's like into me. He was like super awkward. So I wrote her every day just to give her that reassurance. And I read it to her when I get there. And then once we got to Mexico, it was just amazing, man. Like the chemistry was great. It was, it was such a blast. So you were on that kind of reassurance game from the get. Oh, yeah, dude. Always. I'll reassure. That's just the type of guy I am. Like, I'll reassure my girlfriends without even having to ask. Was it frustrating to you? Because it seemed pretty early on that Stacy couldn't get enough of that reassurance almost. Because it's almost surprising to hear you say that you, you know, did mm -hmm. this whole journaling thing. And I can understand from her point of view, the awkwardness could give her doubt but mm -hmm. it almost comes across of her saying hey you know you need to do a little bit more here a little bit more there yeah um, it, yeah it is frustrating because um did you get an inkling of that in mexico no it didn't happen like till we actually got home and until she saw the paper plates and cups yeah <laughs> and all that stuff and i was like <laughs> she yeah just like the outside stuff and that's the hardest part of the experiment when like real life comes now we're back at work and you know, stuff like that. Like, I felt like I did so much to be like that emotional rock for her. You know, it is it is a very intense, you know, in such a short amount of time planning a wedding, like she would have, you know, breakdowns and meltdowns. And, and so I was always like there for her. I'll always pick her back up. She's like, how are you always so calm through this? And I'm just like, I mean, 
someone's got to be, you know, like, yeah. and I'm going to take care of you. And that's what I did. But I still have my own feelings and I'm still like stressed and everything. So, yeah, there hits, there's a point where I do hit like I, I just have a breakdown trying to like take care of her and her feelings and then my feelings as well. It does get frustrating. Yeah. What was your favorite part of Mexico? Every night we would, after like filming, we would end the night. Um, we would just get like a bottle of wine and lay out on the patio and just like reflect on the day and just like talk. It was just a lot more like vulnerable and intimate. And so that's, and that's like the stuff that you don't see on camera. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what would make us stronger uh, and closer. And that was my favorite part. It was just like the calm and the storm. We block everything out and just like relax. How so, did Stacy reveal that she clogged the toilet? <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Uh, I remember she walked out. She was like, um, so I think we have a problem. And she told me, but she wasn't very shy about it. Like she was pretty open. So I'm like, that's pretty cool. I don't mind a girl that can rip the mask. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that feels like Not a, a girl. fucking nightmare. Okay, yeah. A little slap on the butt. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> so you were a supportive king. This is always supportive. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, not every guy would do that. Yeah. 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 Do you feel like that was reciprocated? Like, did you just start farting around her right away? Uh, was no. that like a green light for you? I told, uh, I'm a shy pooper. <laughs> um, so I was like, Clip hey, that. And, and we had the conversation before. I was like, all right, so obviously we have to because we're in the room. I was like, we're going to set some boundaries here. Like, how are we doing the poop situation? Like, do you want me to walk out or whatever? But luckily we had these like really big doors um, and then the toilet was still in its own little room. So we had like two walls. So I was like, I usually go in a shower when I'm in a shower. So I'm leave the shower on, <laughs> do my thing. And I'll be out. So how did, I mean, after she broke it, how did you, where did you pee even? Like, how did you use the restroom? Well, we if ca she, probably called maintenance. I mean, we, we ended up well, calling Well, she said it was like the next morning the next that morning. you were like, check out the toilet. They yeah. let it sit there the whole night? <laughs> I think so. I'm trying to remember. I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we woke up. Uh, yeah. That's a scandal but for what what is is <laughs> <laughs> And they let the shit stay in the toilet for the entire <laughs> night. The monsters. Uh, yeah. uh, I'm just kidding. Um, wild. So, all right, you get back from Mexico, you take her back to your place. And did you meet her parents first or did you go back to y'all's houses we first? We went to our uh, houses first. Your houses first. Yeah. Paper plates. Paper plates. <laughs> I have plates. Like, Do you? Yeah. I, there was a, a different cabinet. Um, and then so I wait, had, wait, like, wait, That wait. was your paper cabinet and yeah. there's a glass cabinet. Wait, you're telling me that that whole episode from Stacy. It, you you had actual plates. There just happened to be a yeah, separate... Yeah, a different, yeah, different drawer. And then in that plate, I had hard plastic plates. It wasn't like just paper plates. <laughs> what was the big deal then? I don't know, <laughs> did, she, did she see the glass plates? Were you like, no. well, I have we, them. Once we saw those, we were just like locked in. I mean, like growing up, like, you know, I come from a large family. We had all sorts of dishware yeah. and chinaware or whatever the fuck, oodles of it. And then mm. mom also had a separate like paper plate plastic cups for like you know yeah if we're grilling out like it's just easier let's just do the paper plate thing you know there's a time and a situation for yeah for those things yeah and uh for, like for work so i was like I, i'm always on the go for work and so and like meal prepping and stuff so i would have like disposable stuff when i'm eating because i'm in my car all day just about so yeah. So, so yeah i have that stuff. so how how did you because it's really fascinating talking to you, uh, someone who had been through some tough situation in the past in terms of relationships. You've had your heart broken. You use that as a reason to do some work on yourself. You did that. You come into this very unique experiment. And it seems like you really took it very earnestly, you know, which is, I'm assuming, a spectrum from all your peers in terms of how you approached it. Mm -hmm. And you've done the work. You, you realize you need to do a better job of setting boundaries and things like that. You're really kind of fighting through the experiment hey love is blind but i guess my question is is how did you decipher between is love blind and i'm just going to power through versus like what are valid red flags for you to start considering you know because how did you in that paper plate conversation come to the conclusion you know what this is like a whatever thing we're just getting to know each other we're just kind of an awkward situation versus like do i need to be concerned about you know stacy making mountains out of molehills type yeah. of thing and as is she looking for reasons to pick a fight with me is she is she looking to try to get out of this situation because i don't understand what's such a big deal about the paper plates like how did you kind of have do those mental gymnastics i just kept reminding myself like 
it's a short time frame. This is going to happen. Take a step back. It's kind of like the only like advice that I would give someone. It's like you don't give up, you know. Um, I recognize that it's not that big of a deal. It can be easily fixed. And so I just, I don't know, just kind of kept pushing through. I didn't really look at anything as like red flags. I just felt I attacked it as like, all right, there's an obstacle thrown at us. Let's figure out a solution and okay. let's move on. And how did you guys resolve that particular? Um, it was actually one of the best nights we had, man. We, um, after that, obviously it was a heated moment and we went home that night and she just came and she was just like, you could tell she finally like cooled off a little bit and she's like, let's fix this. I was like, fuck yeah, baby, let's go. Let's hash it out right now. Uh, so that's the best thing about our relationship is that, you know, anytime there's, you know, any conflict or any obstacle thrown at us, she'll come, she sits on my lap. We talk it out and yeah, and move on and resolve everything. So yeah, we resolved it, brought out some wine. She cooked dinner and it was a beautiful night. Um, all right, Izzy, we're gonna take a little break Perfect. from all the, in, from the interrogation. We're going to get your help, okay. offer some sort of relationship advice. And when we come back, I want to ask you some questions about your peers, uh, that the you're on the show with. Drawer. We also have to get to the <laughs> lost and found drawer. Deal. Uh, we got to get to that, you know, have some questions about Uche and Lydia and Aaliyah and things like that. Uh, cool. if you'd be so generous and, yeah, uh, absolutely. we'll go from there. All right. It's time for sweat in the wedding, Izzy. Let's uh, try to solve some wedding problems. Shopify. I've been a Shopify customer for years now. Shopify is an e-commerce platform revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide. Whether you're a, a garage op- entrepreneur or IP already, Shopify is the only tool you need to start, run, and grow your business without the struggle. Shopify puts you in control of every sales channel. So whether you're selling uh, satin sheets from Shopify's in-person POS system or offering organic olive oil on Shopify's all-in-one commerce e-commerce platform, you are covered. Plus, there's so many wonderful, useful apps that integrate seamlessly with Shopify. It's amazing what you can do with Shopify. Have really cool customer-facing websites. It is wonderful. It's convenient. They have great analytics. Again, super flexible, and it can grow and scale with your business. Doesn't matter the size. It doesn't matter where you start or or what your goals are. Shopify is an amazing platform for you. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. That's huge. And Shopify is truly a global force, powering uh, brands like Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 170 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. Sign up for a $1 per month trial at shopify.com slash V-I-A-L-L, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash V-I-A-L-L, again, all lowercase, to take your business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Drizzly, the number one app for ordering beer, wine, or spirits directly to your doorstep when you need it. Drizzly is the go-to app for drink delivery. Download the app or go to drizzly.com slash gifts today. For my birthday, someone sent me a wonderful bottle of whiskey directly from the Drizzly app. Got a nice little notification, sent it. I was super appreciative. Maybe it's giving a gift. Maybe it's sending it to the party you couldn't make. When we're at parties, sometimes the alcohol is flowing and you run out and no one wants to leave the party. They go to Drizzly and you can restock the party just like that by going to the Drizzly app and ordering your favorite beverages. They have such a selection, all your go-to brands that you love, plus so many more that you get to try. So if you're a wine connoisseur or a craft brew person, if you want to you know, find out something new. Drizzly has a great selection to try out new brands, new styles, new new selections from all o- over the world. Download the Drizzly app today. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com, Drizzly dot com, or download the Drizzly app today or go to Drizzly dot com slash gifts. Use code V-I-A-L-L and receive $5 off or $0 delivery for your first order. So download the Drizzly app today. Use our code, again, V-I-A-L-L, and receive $5 off or $0 delivery fee off your first order. Must be 21 plus, not valid in all states. Codes cannot be combined with any other offers. Not valid at all retailers. Code expires 10 31 23 p.m. Eastern. Derek, you got some Vessi shoes the other day, and they look very stylish, and they're functional. Yeah, they're great. They're really awesome because they're waterproof shoes. They are look like a sneaker, which is nice. You don't have to wear something that looks like a boot. And it is really cool because they come in a different variety of styles. If you want one that's more of a boot sort of style, they have that too. But it's really nice just to have sneakers that you can wear in the rain. You know, I walk everywhere, so it's really nice just... I can splash in a puddle and I know that my socks will be dry. Yeah. And I feel like the fabric is so unique because you expect something that's waterproof to look like a plastic rain boot. But these just look like really cool 
cute sneakers. You got them in black, I believe, and they look really awesome. If you're someone who likes to, you know, walk and stroll your favorite city and want to make sure that your feet are staying dry, but you don't want to give up the comfort of a nice sneaker, you got to check out Vessi because they're incredibly comfortable, stylish, and most importantly, waterproof and not water resistant. Uh, if Vessi hasn't crossed your path yet, think back to the time that you wish that your shoes could withstand the sudden downpouring rain in your favorite city or the time that you went on vacation, you were explored, you, you know, you leave your hotel room, you're gone for like eight hours, you're walking around and inclement weather shows up unexpectedly and then your feet are soaked and wet and then, you know, it's just gross after that. You never, never want that. So you got to check out Vessi for some of the most comfortable waterproof shoes you can find. So you need to head to Vessi.com slash V-I-A-L-L to get yourself a pair today. So that is V-E-S-S-I dot com slash V-I-A-L-L to get yourself a pair today and to get 15% off your first order. So that's Vessi.com slash V-I-A-L-L. How's it going? Hi, my name's Anna. I'm 24 and my best friend is skipping my wedding for a bachelor party. Okay. <gasps> Who is your best? Is your best friend a woman? No, it's a guy. Um, okay. And we've been best friends for like 12 years. Ooh. Okay. Is your uh, best friend in your wedding party or would you like them to be in your wedding party? No. So the wedding party got really big, really fast. So mm -hmm. we decided to stay like stick with the tradition of just girls on the bride side and guys on the, on the groom side. Gotcha. And how long you've been with uh, your partner, your, your fiance? Four years. Four years. And what's their relationship like your fiance and your bestie, your male bestie? I would like to say that it's good, but it's, you know, my fiance is in the military, so we like our whole relationship up until like the third year was long distance. And then I moved in with him when we got engaged. So my friends, unless they've made like a very like big effort, they don't really have that much of a relationship with him. I'm going to ask the obvious question. What are the chances that your best friend feels slightly more for you than just friends? Ooh. None because he's gay. Oh, right. oh, okay. okay. There you go. Yes. That clears that up. Um, All right. Ask. Yeah. yeah. Just the obvious question. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, yeah. Okay. How did your best friend broach that subject? I mean, and when are you getting married? I'm getting married next November. Okay. So there's some time. How did this, you know, it's how did this a really already... early bachelor party? Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, how does, like, what? You know, there's a bachelor party <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the <laughs> same weekend of your Over wedding? Over a year in advance. Well, because it gets more complicated because it's his brother's bachelor party. Okay. So uh, he, his brother just was in town and asked him to be his best man. So I guess ooh. that's when he broke it to him that the bachelor party is the same weekend as my wedding. Okay. That's also interesting information. I guess <laughs> I know you're upset, but I guess given that information, it being his brother and B, he is in fact the best man. And, you know, there's very few responsibilities that a best man has, but one of them is planning a bachelor party. Like, other than just being super disappointed, like, are, are you expecting him to miss the, like, what are your expectations, I guess, is my question. I guess I can't expect to be treated the way I would treat other people. Like, personally, I would skip the bachelor or bachelorette party because a wedding to me has more weight to it. But that's my personal opinion. I just didn't like how he handled the situation. He called me and he didn't, he sounded like his mind had been made up and that's fine. But it also sounded as if he like took the defensive side, like automatically. He was just like, you have to understand, like, it's my brother. You can't expect me to like pick him over you. So it was one of those things that like, he broke the news to me. And then right afterwards, he was almost like attacking me. So I was like trying to process like being upset that he's not going to my wedding. Gotcha. And then all of a sudden he's attacking me. So, so he kind of like, told you how he thought you should feel about it. Exactly. He felt defensive. He got, you know, yeah. he was worried you would be upset with him instead of giving you a chance to hear the news, sit in it and respond yeah. however you wanted to respond and then have a conversation about it. He immediately kind of always, he went on the offensive and told yeah. him, he told you his expectations of how he thought you should handle it, which felt yeah. dismissive, I guess, from your point of view. Yeah. And I just thought like there's over a year of wiggle room like i just figured a, a bachelor party can be moved like i don't expect that but i 
I would expect my best friend to try something. That's an interesting point. No, well, he, if he's the one planning it too, yeah, it's yes. like the brother he's is the ba- it. He's the yeah. best man. It's literally his job to plan the events. He has a whole fucking year. Seriously. But uh, I don't think he's planning it because he already knows what they're doing. So well, he said the cruise, they're doing a cruise. So he's like, the cruise is this day, the same weekend as your wedding. So that also confused me. So I was like, okay, if you're planning it, then that would, you know, make a little more sense. But if you already know what you're doing, it sounds like probably his brother is planning it already and just telling him where to be. And I don't know, like, I just, I would expect if it was the roles were reversed, I would do anything. Like I would just be like, okay, is there any way that I could make both? Or like we can switch the bachelor party because there's obviously more wiggle room with that than a wedding. I just felt very like, like he just didn't care much. Yeah. So I guess what is your, cause it sounds like he's going on the cruise. So what is your goal of the call? Is it to try to like how you should handle it? How do you resolve this conflict and preserve the friendship? I guess, what do you, what do you hope and what do you think is realistic? Yeah. So there's a few things that I'm like conflicted about. I want to know how to move forward because there's been like, like he's texted me since then and I texted him back and that's where it kind of ended so I want to know like how to move forward because obviously this isn't like a friendship ending situation like I don't want it to be it's it's silly um but then also there's the fact that like the same thing happened to my fiance about a month ago where his um best friend decided that he was going to get married um like 20 days after us so then that means that they're not going to our wedding. And we found out through social media after like we told them like, hey, if you guys are planning your wedding, let us know because obviously you're going to be like the groomsmen in our wedding. So that affects like both weddings or whatever. So a month back when I thought all my friends and my best friend was going to my wedding, I told them like, well, I think that's rude. And if they're going to decide to not go to our wedding, I don't want them at like any wedding festivities. So like we're doing a co-ed bridal shower. so. I didn't want to invite them. So now that this is happening to me, I stick by my statement. I don't want anybody that's not attending the wedding to be invited. Maybe that's petty, but... It's a little petty. <laughs> it's a little petty. Yeah. <laughs> so is that you enforcing that r- rule or boundary, whatever you want to call it, to your husband? Like with your friend? Are you saying you're deciding, all right, if you're not coming to your, your my wedding, then... I'm not you going to have you in any of the festivities or is your husband being like, all right, well, fiance. if I can't, if your fiance is like, all right, if I can't <laughs> include him at any of the other festivities and you can't include your friend either now that he's also bailing, like who's enforcing that boundary, you or your fiance? No, totally me. He's okay. more like chill about it. I feel bad because he, I know he cares that his best friend isn't going and I know that he cares about how it all went down because we found out on social media after he like tried to have a conversation with him and all of that. So it's kind of me saying like, well, I stick by my statement that I was, you know, that I enforced when your best friend was going through a situation. Gotcha. So I'm sticking by it. He's saying that I'm being a little petty. Uh, yes. Okay. Do <laughs> yes. you want to be right or do you want to be happy? I want to be happy. Okay. But. But. I, <laughs> I want to be happy, but I think that going to be like. One, his best friend is just annoying. So I don't want him and his fiance there because we kind of got into it after like she posted on social media, like her wedding date and everything like that and didn't give us the respect of like, you know, reaching out and being like, hey, we're getting married 20 days after you guys. He, we won't be able to go even though like we were going to go. He was going to be a groomsman, all of that. So I don't want them there. But my fiance really wants them there, their childhood best friend. And I'm just like stuck with my best friend. I I fully think like, listen, you're not going to the wedding. That's fine. But I don't like, why should I invite you to everything else if you're not going to care enough to show up to the wedding? It just sounds petty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you want me to be honest? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 this really comes down to, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? Right. That's the message I'm going to say is going to be around that. Right. You just said to us earlier that you don't want this situation to be kind of the end of your friendships. Right. Yeah. Is that, that's a true statement. Well, my friendship, but I don't think that my fiance's best friend is a very good friend to him. So well, I don't care about that friendship. But that is up for your fiance to decide. 
Do you trust yes, Do you trust your true. fiance to manage his own friendships? I do. I just think sometimes he can be a pushover. So I get like overprotective over him and like, sure, I'm like, you know, stand your ground or something. But yeah, but also that, that, that pushover totally quality is probably, and, and maybe you're right at times, but that quote unquote pushover quality, that thing you want him to work on probably also allows him to be generous and considerate and empathetic to others and allows him to be a great friend and probably a great partner to you because he is willing to yeah. take the high road or, you know, at times not let his frustrations or own pettiness get in the way. And my guess is there's a little bit yeah, of <laughs> balance there. And so yeah. I guess what I'm, that's what I'm saying. It's just like, listen, you can let this be a situation that is frustrating to you. You have every right to be frustrated. I get it. You know, like it, it seems un I would be as frustrated as you are about how my friend chose to handle it. I would feel like I didn't get an opportunity to even get mad or frustrated, you know? So you have every right to communicate that with your friend. Now, then you have the other choice of, do I want to make this a bigger situation? Do I want this to bleed into my friendship? And pettiness will allow it to manifest and turn into something else snowball like it could be an opportunity for you back you go back in your mind and think of every moment that your friend let you down and disappointed you and you could use that as a way to say you know what not only did you not go to my wedding but you did x y and z and you're just going to decide not to let it go and this and then what is he going to do you know he could start doing the same thing these are how friendships can fall apart you know if you want to go back and litigate every moment in your friendship about the times you let each other down this is a great way to like instigate that. Or you could maybe write your friend a note or ask him out to coffee and sit down with him because you've been best friends and by your words for the past 12 years with this person. And you can say, listen, you've made your decision, but can I just say it really like I just it really disappointed me how you handled it. And they could be like, well, what do you mean? It's just like you just told me what you were going to do. And ultimately, you're going to do what you wanted to do. But like you didn't. You didn't even give me a chance to respond or get mad or talk with you about it. And it felt very dismissive. And I did, that, that just hurt my feelings more than anything. You know, it made me feel like, you know, it, I wasn't a priority at all. Like, it didn't even seem like you were willing to try. And I'm guessing that will allow him to acknowledge, well, I felt defensive. I was worried that you'd get upset and yada, yada, and things like that. I also don't yeah. think that it's that he doesn't care. I think he does really care, but he's choosing between a rock and a hard place. It's his brother and it's his best friend. And I think allowing him to be at all of the other wedding events that he can be at is just as good because he can't be at the wedding. And that sucks. And I'm sorry, but like he d I mean, he does have to be with his brother. But I think having him at the bridal shower and having him on your bachelorette trip, if you haven't taken it yet, and having him kind of be involved as much as he can will fill that void as much as possible you know his failure in his response to you is a product of him caring it doesn't feel that way but that's why he handled it so poorly that's why he got defensive that's why he went on the offensive because he knew how upset you would get so that's you know that's not an excuse for how he handled it but it, i'm letting you know it's not because he doesn't care he very much cares that's why he was so shitty in his response often when we you know, that's that's usually a catalyst for why we handle situations poorly. It's because we don't know what to do. We get bad advice and we just, ah, I don't want to deal with it. So like, let's just be dismissive. Yeah. I mean, I, I know he cares that it was just more like, I also know him really well. And I know that he his he can't stand having anyone be mad at him or like upset at him. Sure. So I kind of like felt rushed. I felt like, OK, he called and I, I I think I handled it well enough in the point like I didn't start screaming or yelling or anything like that. I just told him like, hey, it's obviously not friendship ending, but I need a minute like I need a second. And then he was like, OK, bye. And he hung up. And I mean, I get it. Like maybe he was nervous or whatever. And then the text message was kind of just a word vomit of like, you know that I care about you and I love you and blah, blah, blah. And you don't think that this like makes me so upset. And then just like, but you have to understand. And it just felt like he was trying to rush it and be like, please don't be mad at me. Like, please, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, this happens th when we have big fights in our friendship. It's like him rushing it because he doesn't like me being mad. But I also need time to like process. And like, I told him, I'm like, in my opinion, it feels like you made the decision right then and there. And I, and if the roles were reversed, I feel like I would have tried to like do anything 
to make it work out. And I don't feel like I got that from him. So that's like the most upsetting part because I'm, I know like it's a destination wedding. Like I know I'm asking a lot from the guests and like, it's no problem. Like if you can't make it, that's okay. But for my best friend, I would have expected like him trying to just like work something out. Yeah, I know. I, I hear you on that. But just because our friends don't meet our expectations doesn't mean they're bad friends. That just means they didn't meet our expectations. And I'm not saying they didn't do anything wrong. You have every right to be upset. But your fiance at some point is not going to meet your expectation and you will get mad and you will be justified for getting mad. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you're 100% right and he's 100% wrong. Or, or maybe there are situations where that happens, but you know, you work through those times too. You're going to handle some situations differently than your friends will and your partner will. But like we sometimes, it's that kind of main character syndrome is, well, because I would handle it this way. Apparently that's how everyone should handle it. Like you're, you become judge, jury, and executioner for every situation because, well, this is how I would handle it. And I'm, yeah. I like how I would handle it. And even if you put a lot of effort in consideration for how you're handling a situation, you know, like I want to be thoughtful hey, I'm really giving this the consideration it needs to do it the right way. And then that makes us feel more justified to stand our ground, you know, and well, I would handle it this way because I'm not only handled it this way, but I've thought about how I should handle it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then because you feel like he was reactive, you feel more right. And I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying that's just your perspective. Yeah. So should I just like let everything go and kind of just invite the best friends to the wedding shower and just like let them be there and kind of take the higher road and like put my pettiness aside. I mean, it's a, what, I think give your time, give yourself time to be upset. I don't know exactly how long it's been since you've had this conversation with him, but give yourself time to mourn the fact that he won't be there. That is sad. And that is like, I know that feeling. I have best friends who won't be at my wedding and it does suck. I don't think when his brother told him the weekend that his bachelorette trip is. He was like, oh, it's the same weekend. All right. Yeah, no, it's fine. Like, I'm sure he pushed back yeah. and I'm sure he asked, like, is there any other weekend we can do? Like, is anything, you know, this is my best friend's wedding weekend. I'm sure he tried to fight it. Yeah, I feel like if both yeah. of you had some like a little bit more faith in each other and if you do want to address this as like a, if this is something that you feel like is a real reoccurring pattern in your friendship and it's something where it's like it's not just about kind of like hashing out or making it fair for this one scenario, but it's more like to grow our relationship and be better friends moving forward. Like if it is something you choose to address, I think a lot of it could just be both of you having a bit more faith in each other where it's like him having faith in you that you will get to the place of forgiveness. But like you just need time and a little bit of space to get there. And it would be really yeah. helpful if he could like be there with you and like be a presence for that and then also kind of conversely like you having faith in him and like giving him true benefit of the doubt because I think as soon as you see him at your shower and he's there to celebrate you I think it will feel really really good but like I sure as shit wouldn't be thinking about that where you know in this stage <laughs> like it's hard right now because it's like feelings are hurt but I feel like you know once there is that level of like forgiveness and connection it's just like such a relief for everyone is he what would you, how do you, how do you see this situation? Uh, I agree with you guys. I mean, it's a very tough scenario. I kind of had one similar, I would say. And yeah, it's just at the end of the day. How'd you handle it? What, um, what happened? What's the situation? It's kind of the same thing. Like my buddy um, had to go. Yeah, he had to leave. I had like a, it was like a graduation thing. I mean, not a wedding, but it was like a graduation thing. Um, and like he ended up choosing just like a silly trip with a girlfriend, you know what I mean? It was a big deal. It was like back in the day, I was like in the fire academy and I graduated from that. And so like, I wanted him there and like, yeah, he chose it. But at the end of the day, I mean, we're best friends. We've been best friends since we were four and you know, I didn't agree with this decision, but at the end of the day, like you're my ride or die. Um, and yeah, so it, it sucks, but I love the guy. And in the end, I'm going to choose our friendship over everything. So like, what do, how do I move on from this? Cause I obviously love him so I don't want to I don't want it to be friendship ending but I also am having a hard time like explaining to him why I'm so upset and having him like, like understand that it's not just about not attending the wedding it's how he handled it so how do I have that conversation and like tie it up in a nice little boat and move on I think you have a face-to-face -face conversation with him sit down with him over dinner I don't know what you two do and just say hey listen can we talk about the whole wedding stuff. And you got to come from a place of, you know, you have to bring it up in a non-confrontational way. Not like, all right, let's fucking, you know. 
hash this out. Let's hash this out. You know, it's just like, can we just talk about it? Let's just talk. Let's just talk. As a person from experience yeah. going through this, it's all about your delivery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from experience, it's just going nice and easy. Obviously, you want to be heard, but yeah, just like don't go in overbearingly. <laughs> and I, I think you start by just accepting his decision. I know you're not going to be there. And reassuring him. I've accepted that. And then, yes, reassure him. Do the thing that you want him to do with you. Empathize with his situation, because that's what you want from him. You want him to consider and empathize with what, how he's disappointing you. So I, as disappointed as I am, I understand that you want to be there for your brother. I, I get it. I understand that you were put in a very difficult position, and it must have been really hard for you knowing that you would disappoint me. And I know that you don't like disappointing other people. I understand all that. Despite that, it did hurt my feelings. You know, we've been friends for 12 years and it, it's not, it was one thing for you not to be there. It was another thing that you just like, you didn't even like, tell, you literally told me I couldn't get upset. And you told me that I'm just supposed to be fine with it. And that, that was frustrating. Cause like, don't you want me to be upset that you're not going to be there? Don't you want me to care that you're not going to be at my wedding? And if that's, if the worst thing that I'm doing is this being disappointed that I can't be there for you, you that you're not going to be at my wedding. Like, so be it, but I love you. And I just, in the future, can you just like talk to me about this stuff and like uh, let me be disappointed? I'll promise to do a better job of handling my disappointment in the future. But like, I want you to allow me to, you know, I want us to be able to talk through stuff. You're my best friend. I love you, you know, and just go from there. Okay. So should I give it time to see if he even answers the text that I sent him? No, you know what you want to do. So this is not, don't yeah. test him. Okay. Yeah, this isn't someone you've been dating for three weeks. Like, you can yeah. double text each other. He's your best <laughs> yeah, fucking friend. Yeah. And especially, yeah. like, going into this with the energy of, like, I'm talking about this because I want our friendship to heal. Like, I think, like, framing it that way is going to be good. And please, like, let us know how this goes. Because, like, this is your best friend. Okay. You really, I feel like, from what you've said, like, it seems like you're really willing to, like, be the bigger person, have that perspective once you get this closure. So, like, please keep us updated because I'm sure... Well, it will hopefully be a positive okay. one. And one other note, as far as your uh, the other wedding going on, and it, just to say this with love, from her, this other girl and their wedding and his, your buddy's best friend, you know, you're planning your wedding and it feels important to you. And obviously it is. You're the main character in your story. Well, they're the main character in their story. And I don't know, no. it's, diff it's challenging to plan a wedding. Venues, there's a lot of like, it's stressful. All the stress that you're going through, they're going through too. And like, don't be petty just because they planned a wedding three weeks, you know, before and, and you weren't the center of their attention. And I, it feels, you know, you have the right to want to be the center of attention. It's your wedding, but they're, they have a wedding to plan. So don't make life harder on your fiance just because you have a bone to pick. Just let it slide. It wasn't the fact that they're not going or anything like that. It was more of like the lack of respect that my fiance reached out and, you know, but, but yeah, I just, I have to let it go. Let him pick his own and, battles. Yeah. Life will be a lot easier. All right. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Okay. Well, we definitely want an update after you okay. talk with the friend, okay? <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Talk to you later. Okay. Izzy, we're back. We're back. Let's get to the box. Lost it's, and found. Uh, yeah. What? The lost and found. The drawer. <laughs> the drawer. Um, Might as well have been a box. There was so much in it. <laughs> it was basically a, like a conquest drawer, I suppose. I felt like watching it back, you know, guy to guy. We, 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 I said this on our episode yesterday. I think it started organically. You know, I think organically someone left a braid behind. You're like, oh, I'll just, a braid. A braid. <laughs> whatever. I don't know what the fuck's in that drawer. An earring? Someone's hair fell out and he put it in like the a, drawer. A hair tie. A I, don't, I don't know Bobby what the fucking shit's called. A bobby pin, whatever. Like some eyelashes, you know, who knows? And you had the best of intentions. You're like, oh, I'll just, maybe they'll, they'll ask for it back. Yeah, I mean. And then, and then that like accumulated. And then one day you looked at it and, you, and you're like, I fuck. <laughs> I get bitches. I get oh. laid. <laughs> and it was a little bit of a, like a, a pat in the old back of, of seeing your conquests in a drawer. A and scrapbook. A scrapbook, if you will. <laughs> and then I had the theory that the reason why you left it there is you got back from the pods in Mexico, your world's turned upside down, you left for a show that you were like, I don't know how this is gonna go. You know, a month later, you're fucking engaged, you're four weeks away from a wedding, your life's turned upside down, you get back from the pods, you go to her apartment, you look in your drawer, you're like, oh, and then you just kind of like didn't do anything, and then it festered and you kind of blurted it out, and you realize you did something stupid, 
yeah. by not throwing it away, but you didn't really know how to say to Stacy <laughs> what I just said to you. Yeah. I, um, so I honestly, yeah, that's exactly how you described it. Like I didn't even expect to come back with anything like engage or anything like that. And so we go to my place and she's going through every single drawer and cabinet. And so as we're getting to that point, I'm like, once she found the paper plate, she's like, what else is there? (laughs) So she goes to the bathroom and she's doing all that. And I'm just like, fuck, like I know it's there and I know she's going to see it. So I just took the initiative. I was like, you know what? Through the entire experience, like I'm just going to be very open and raw and what you see is what you get. Like I have nothing to hide from you. And I was like, yeah, there's a lost and found drawer. Like I know you're about to see it. And so I'm just going to go ahead and just show you. And lost yeah. and found drawer. <laughs> and so, and it's, so the reason I had this stuff that is because. That sounds like a leave one, take one situation. <laughs> I mean, like I have, you know, friends that have stayed, obviously girls that have stayed over as well. And. Like, I don't want to just throw their stuff away. Like, I have good relationships with these people still. It's not like, you know, it's like an ex's stuff. But what was in the drawer? I honestly don't even remember. Uh, I want to say probably just like a, like an earring, which was like a nice diamond earring that I'm not going to just go chunk some girl stuff. Like, I felt bad, you know? Um, Why not not be like, hey, I got your earring? Uh, Well, I did. Like, I text them, but it's just like, I'll see you when I see you kind of thing. You know what I mean? It wasn't like urgent. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to hold it. if we cross paths because like i usually keep good relationships with people no, i hear you i mean it's uh, like you went literally from one day in your fuck boy era and yeah. i don't mean that in as a you know no, just, but it is what it is it's and then the truth, in know? a month later you're an engaged man overnight with yeah. no time in between yeah so i mean i was just open and honest um some people you know would appreciate the honesty some people are like dude you're stupid for that like you should have trashed it if i would have went to her place and there's a guy's shirt or something like i wouldn't have freaked out i'm like you know it's like you had a life before this i get it it's cool like i mean even if if it, like I, I still wouldn't get like upset even if like she had like an extra show I'm like whatever I'm, I'm with you now so how how did she take it though i guess in the moment with you being there like i mean what was her biggest frustration she said she's like why if you knew you like you had that why didn't you like go out of your way to come throw it out and i was just like in my head, Valid I was like, question. yeah, and I was like, I hear you. I was like, as far as for me, like, I wanted to leave everything as is so you could just see how my life was before. I was Wait, just is very- that part true or did you just kind of forget? I forgot, honestly. Yeah. So then when it was there, I was like, fuck, like, I mean, I'm, I have nothing to hide. So I'll just, I'll sure. I would, could have tried to like, while she was in there, run away and like try to go. It's a damned if you do, because if she would have caught you like rushing yeah. to the bathroom to grab the drawer and throw it out, it would it would have come across is that you're trying to hide it from exactly. her. But weren't you there the day before and you were like cleaning up? I went up in and really quick and went something? out. Oh, okay. Yeah, because we were living at the other place at this point. And I think it was like, I just went in to get something for my dogs or my dogs were there. Yeah, because we hadn't, our dogs hadn't met yet at that point. So okay. like, I'm still having to go back and forth like with my dogs. And it's like, I'm not, I'm not, not thinking of that. this stuff right yeah. now. Like, yeah, I'm living out of a suitcase. Like everything that I would have in that drawer usually was is already in my suitcase. So I'm not like... Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How did you guys resolve things that night? That was the night when uh, the paper plate thing too. Okay, that was um, okay. That was all. She comes. She said, "Yeah, we talk. We have dinner, and yeah, regardless, whatever we face, we always fix it." So, well, uh, we know, uh, Izzy, you are coming back after the reunion. So, so many more questions we have for you. Curious if you're with Stacy. If you're not with Stacy. Uh-huh. I'm having a hard time telling. <laughs> um, so we're excited to have you back. But before we let you go to this week, i just curious about some of your other castmates. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the Uche and Lydia fight, the accusation of her knowing, not knowing that he was on, the Aaliyah of it all. I guess, how did you see some of those other uh, situations and how involved were you as a friend or just an observer? Um... Honestly, I didn't know any of that was going on. Okay. Um, I knew they were exes or whatever, um, but I didn't know exactly what was going on with like Aaliyah and that. I will say like in that scenario at the barbecue, I was just there for Milton. It was a very awkward spot. 
I really felt for him. I'm proud of him. He handled himself so well. Uh, but there was a time where in that scenario, he was just like kind of locked in the bathroom by himself. Like he was just overwhelmed, you know, and I was just like, so I went in oh, there. Really? And I Melton was locked. He locked himself in the bathroom. He said he took, he was like, I just took a, it was the longest piss of my life or something. Yeah, yeah. He, was but like, he just like, yeah, he sat in there for a while and just kind of got away from it. I don't blame him. Um, and so I just went in there and just kind of just was there for him. Like, dude, you got it. Let's just make it through. Like talk to her later give her some time she's obviously like overwhelmed but like be there for her at the same time but yeah i, I didn't really didn't get involved with that too much i just kind of sat back and watched um, what's uh, your read on uche because i listen i'm a strategic guy and you know i like to think things through i've mm -hmm. you know i like to calculate things so to speak yeah so i don't i don't fault people for being strategic or calculated to a certain degree mm -hmm. but yeah, what is your read on Uche? Because there's there's being calculated and then there's like being calculated. And he, um, he seems like he wants to litigate everyone's misfortune so that he can... He seems more focused on winning breakups rather than developing relationships. That's my read. Yeah. I don't know what your read... Obviously, you've watched it, but you've also got to live with him. How does the watching it back change your perception of Uche versus living and getting to know Uche? Yeah, so watching it back, like, I mean, now I'm not so shocked, but like I was kind of shocked watching it um, because he was the oldest of all of us. He was kind of like the one, the most wise is giving the advice, you know, in the lounge. He was super, like really cool, level headed. And I thought like we were all good friends um, after the show. I was in shock. He was kind of talking bad about me to a lot of the cast people. He was. Yeah. When did you find that out? Same time he found out Johnny was talking bad about you. No, this was like after filming. Like oh. this was like everything was already done. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, what the what hell? What did I you do? To I was like, people? what did I do to you? I thought we what were did, boys. What were some of the things he said? Um, uh, like he would just tell Johnny that I was like kind of like a shit guy because me and Johnny ended up meeting like after the show. We talked everything out. I apologized. We got some clearance and like we're good friends after that. So yeah, like he would get mad at Johnny for like hanging around with me, and then he would tell like some of the other castmates like why are you hanging out with him he's a shit guy he would say like you're so superficial i have a lot of friends at home and like so, a, a lot of friends that are girls too and like you know i'm with my friends on their birthdays and stuff and he sees me with all these girls and he's like yeah he's like he's so superficial look at all the girls he's around all the time and then me and stacy we all ended up like going for drinks one time uh stacy him one more person from the cast. It was like four of us. I walked to the bathroom and he's like trying to badmouth me to Stacy, like as I'm there. And I'm like, dude, what did I do to you? Do you think he's a bit two-faced? Uh, I mean, he's a good, I just, I, I'm just confused in the situation. But he is a good guy. I saw him interact with all the other guys. I just don't, I don't know. I've never approached him with it. Um, You just let it slide. Yeah. Like, I'm just like, look, I didn't do anything. If you have your opinion, that's fine. Like it wasn't that big of a deal to Can me. Can you so. help us understand JP? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Did anyone ever ask him why he only wears red, white, and blue? Um, I think some of the guys did, but literally everything. Like, I don't think I ever saw him one time over there without something American flag. <laughs> anyway, what is his answer? He's just like, he just loves America. He just loves America. He just loves America. Yeah, he's like, America, I mean, fuck I you. Love America. That's what yeah, always great. say. Uh, America and fuck, yeah. <laughs> did you, has anyone talked to him about the whole lack of dialogue between taylor or makeup gate or um, any, any of that again like i felt he handled it incredibly poorly oh, i yeah. think he came across as a dick yeah i also felt bad for him because <laughs> i saw a guy who didn't quite understand how he was coming across yeah uh and again not an excuse he needs to learn how to communicate but i i really felt bad for him it sounds like this guy's been through a lot he was pretty open about his traumatic childhood and i just i really i pitied him because yeah. i he seems like the beneath all his lack of communication and, and, and his poor social skills there there's it seems like a good heart oh, yeah. underneath it all and what would you have to say to that yeah he's a really good guy like i got to hang out with him one-on-one -on -one. um I believe he's been like seeing a girl for a year now so i mean obviously he's doing something right but um i think yeah i think sometimes a lot of the guys are not very intact with their emotions or can express them very well um and i think that was just the case with him i did talk to him in mexico and he was like taylor's beautiful i love the way she looks you know without her makeup like she has such natural beauty obviously the way he worded it to her was completely yeah, horrible yeah. why don't you just say that uh, yeah you, you <laughs> yeah. should have just said it that way so i mean he comes from a good spot he has a good heart i think he just needs to work on his uh, presentation on how he delivers things it's, 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 i feel like that's kind of a trend for 
season five, our deliveries are poor. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. That's um, I, that's what I love about Love Is Blind is because it seems to cast regular people with regular relationship problems, and you know, everyone has red flags. Mm-hmm. What would you say to close things out? Uh, what would you say are things that you learned about yourself? through this process a guy who has been reflective in the past who's done the work mm-hmm. i'm assuming you agree that you're, you're never a finished product so yeah what would be something that you from have, episodes one through seven yeah one through seven, <laughs> from, um, from one through seven i would say probably react better in a moment be okay. more well composed yeah i would say that's probably the biggest takeaway like i saw a side of myself that i've never seen before it's usually not how i am I was discussing with it so I learned from that and yeah, take the ownership, apologize and move on. Okay. Izzy, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, thanks for coming. Yeah, I feel like you me. answered a lot of the burning questions. We look forward to having you back in a few weeks <laughs> post <laughs> reunion. Lots. Well, I don't know if there's a lot to talk about. I seem like there's going to be a lot to talk about. Oh yeah. Yeah. There'll be some good stuff in there. Uh, <laughs> so uh, excited for that. But until then, we appreciate it. Where can people follow you? Follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Okay. Uh, Izzy what is Sabata. it? Izzy Sabata underscore. Okay. All yeah, right. Thanks for having me. Uh, thank you. Don't forget to send in those questions for all things Sweat in the Wedding, texting office hours, Ask Nick, you know the drill at uh, asknick at com. We are back next week with uh, the one and only Gabby Wendy to help break down the rest of Love is Blind, Golden Bachelor, Lo- Bachelor in Paradise. So it's a jam-packed reality recap. And next week, we have Heather Debro from uh, Real Housewives of Orange County following the, you know, the reunion. So right after the reunion, lots to get into with Heather. Um, a lot of burning questions for Heather. And yeah, better late than never tonight, live at nine. Don't forget, get ready for a jam-packed month. We'll see you next time. Bye. Hey guys, if you loved what you listened to, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.